Good now, revolutionaries, and welcome back to Faceless Labs. We have looked at a lot of information together, but all of it depends on this skill we are about to teach you now. Alex, we are going to teach them how to read the Blockchain Explorer. How important a skill would you say this is? I would say it's the most important skill that you can learn in crypto. And I think the cool part is that you can learn it relatively quickly, and then it's pretty much all on you to just keep exploring uh, but you can get the basic tenets of the skill very easily. And the reason I say it's so important is just because the whole point of this thing, right? You hear trustless, you hear peer to peer, you hear decentralized all these buzzwords. All of these words get thrown around a lot, right? But what, what do they even mean and why do they matter? And really for me, the point of a blockchain is to put data in a place where anyone can look at it and verify that it's accurate. But if you don't know how to look at the data and you don't know how to verify if it's accurate, we could write anything you want there and it doesn't matter. So yeah. let's uh, let's do a quick intro. Uh, we're just gonna use one blockchain explorer as an example. Uh, obviously it goes without saying that every blockchain has their own explorer. Ethereum's got one, Polkadot's got one, Solana's got one, they've all got one. We're gonna take a look at one of them and give you the basics. Excellent. So whip it on out, Alex, and I'll let the folks follow along at home. Etherscan.io is where we're going. Every blockchain is going to have one or more explorers where you can access a simple to read user interface that is essentially a copy of what is written right there in the magic notebook on the blockchain. And this is what Etherscan looks like. What are we looking at, Alex? So what we've got for you today is Etherscan. This is the blockchain explorer for Ethereum. Now, it also is worth noting that there are sometimes multiple explorers for different blockchains. Um, yeah. there, there, there is not just one. Etherscan is the most common, the most popular explorer for Ethereum, which is arguably the biggest blockchain. Although, fun sure. fact, uh, Solana has done more volume in the last few days than Ethereum has. So that really- Sure, and, uh, and Tether does more volume all the time. This is true. This is true. But and to be fair, seen the, the trades, holders, there are all these metrics, but Ethereum's king. It, it, yeah, I mean, you know, for now, at least we'll see if something ever dethrones it, but um, not outside their own possibility for sure. I hear the sound of all the Bitcoin maxis in our audience just clenching and unsubscribing. <laughs> well, that's all right. We uh, we're not maximalists here. So, you know, there's room there's room for everybody to be king at some everybody. point. That's right. That's um, right. I like to do a an example uh, query every single time I do this explainer. So we're going to look up a token that I love using as an example, and you will see why in a second. It's called ColdStack. Uh, what the project is and what it does for this demonstration is honestly not important. Uh, you are more than welcome to dig into it on your own time. This is not an endorsement of it as a good investment or anything like that. I just really like the way that there is some specific information that really just lends itself nicely to demonstrating a couple different pieces of using a blockchain explorer that's present in the cold stack uh, project in the cold stack token. So that's why I use it. All right, so you search a contract, you search a token ticker, whatever, whatever it is up here, you can see you can search by address, hash, block, token, all kinds of stuff you can look up on an explorer, right? Don't worry about all that, we'll get into it later. For now, we're starting with just a token. We get a profile page and it gives us a brief overview. How many tokens are there? How many people are holding it? How many times has it been transferred? Some market information. You can see the price in both US dollars and in ETH. What's it done in the last 24 hours? What is the total market cap of the, of the supply? Uh, and if the, uh, if the circulating supply uh, was to be isolated by itself, you know, what's the market cap for just that? Uh, what we can tell from this even already is that the entire supply of this token is not actively circulating. So that's, that's worth noting. Over here as well, just like we've seen on previous uh, tools like Dex Screener and stuff like that, you can see the contract address, which you can take and do other things with. If you wanted to perform an audit, look it up by itself on the Explorer, um, whatever it is that you might need the address for, plug it into a Dex, yada, yada. We scroll down a little bit farther and we get to our first stop in today's explainer, which is just activity on the network. So we can see here that it's separated into a few tabs handy for us, transfers, holders, info, et cetera. We're gonna start with transfers. This is every transaction that utilizes the cold stack CLS token on Ethereum. You can get a list, when was it, 
Who is it from? Where did it go? What uh, total quantity was transacted with? Um, there's a couple different pieces of information here. Which block is it a part of? Over here, you can get the transaction hash, which is kind of like a serial number to identify an individual transaction by. You'll notice these are all links. So for example, one of the things that blockchain explorers are great for is kind of following a trail. So if I wanted to get more information about this transaction beyond just what's listed right here, all I have to do is hit this link and boom, I'm popped right into a page here where I can get now all the, sp the specific in the weeds info for this transaction, namely full hash. Was it a success or not? Where, uh, which block was it? Timestamp. We can kind of break into a little bit deeper what happened. So they swapped 4,380 uh, 85.6 CLS tokens for just over a quarter ETH. They used this cow protocol. I'm not familiar with that, but it's got to be some, some decentralized exchange, some kind of DeFi protocol, who knows? Um, looks like it could be associated with Uniswap. So something built over there. We could dig in further and get more information, but for now we'll leave it there. We can also see then where, where did the transaction originate from? This is an address right here. Uh, one of the little pro tips you'll pick up after you're doing this a couple times it starts with zero X. We know that's an address. We could follow this out to its own page, get more details about that specifically. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the rest of the rest of the information is right here. Uh, transaction fee, good old Ethereum. You can see somebody paid $33 uh, and 82 cents to execute this transaction, which, you know, sadly, not the worst I've seen gas. No, but just, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> could be way worse. Alex, then, before you move on, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go for it. I just wanted to ask you about some of these named wallets a little further because I think sure. a concern that people have is they're trying to understand what they're looking at is how this data is presented and curated. So that says Uniswap, which mm -hmm. I assume means that that is a wallet that is officially linked to the Uniswap protocol. But like, how do I know that somebody hasn't gone in here and done some sort of foolery uh, you know, named their wallet Uniswap. What, what kind of verification can I do there? Can I click into that and get more information? What would you say? No, that's a good question. So this is one of the like display kind of front end upgrades that has taken place on the explorers. And you'll see this all over the place. Um, just kind of the farther into it we get, they're just trying to save us some time. And, you know, they've already vetted and shown that this is the Uniswap thing. But the beautiful thing, the reason we're here in the first place, right, is I don't have to take their word for it. So sure, absolutely. If I wanted to, I could click into this wallet over here, or excuse me, this, um, I said wallet, and what I did was click on the uh, the stable coin instead. Oh, the token, so, I got you, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is specifically talking about USDC inside of this pool, the CLS versus USDC pool on Uniswap version two. Um, gotcha. So if I wanted to get more information about any of these things labeled, then yeah, absolutely. So let's try, let's try this one right here. So here is the address for this thing that they've labeled as cow swap uh, or cow protocol, excuse me, which again, not familiar with, but you know, here's Ooh, where we can come if we wanted to get more info uh, and right away we can see, you know, current balance, there's not really much in there, a couple bucks for gas. Although as we just saw, that's not enough. Um, we've got a couple other little pieces here. We can go down and see kind of the same, a similar setup. Like, you know, we saw before a bunch of transactions. Yeah, uh, this wallet has made almost a million transactions, which tells me right off the bat, this is not uh, a friend of mine like Alex, right? Right. You know, yeah. somebody this is, is not just clicking and going to the gas station and picking up the money and then coming back home. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So again, you don't have to take the explorer's word for it, you know, you can come in here and dig around and try to confirm for yourself by like, you know, following a bunch of these before you realize that, okay, these are timed at the same time that this swap is doing it. You know, I could probably go to this cow protocol and dig from there and get a little more information about the addresses that they claim and all that sort of stuff too. Uh, but the point is that it's all just raw data here and they've started to kind of add these up a little bit. One thing that's nice too, which here, let's see if this works. They've started to do, if you highlight something, it will show you how many other times that exact address or that exact um, you know protocol name or token address or whatever pops up on the same page you're looking at. So I can see here, you know, 
a, a little bit of a representation of what that looks like now, which is just another kind of quality of life upgrade. But if we went back here, let's see if it does it for us. We could, so we can see here, right? Like these last two transactions were both uh, on this cow protocol. This one seems to be by itself. Let's try this. Okay, here's one on MEXC, the uh, okay. crypto Another exchange. exchange we know. So we can see here it pops up a couple times. Uniswap pops up a couple times, uh, just to make it a little easier as we're as we're sleuthing. And if you were coming here, maybe from your wallet, what you might see is you'd be looking for the transaction in your wallet. It's going to have what's reported here. It's going to have a transaction hash. That's like the receipt for your transaction, a unique timestamp that provably separates it from every other transaction that's happened on this ledger. You'll see the sender's address. You'll be able to see your address. You'll see exactly when it happened. And what I like about it too is it allows you to extrapolate other information. Like if you see the quantity and you know the market cap, then you can determine, uh, or the circulating supply, you can determine about how much you paid if you forgot. Um, there are a lot of different things, problems you can solve if you go here, right? Yeah, exactly. These are the ingredients to figure out specific things that have happened uh, in or around any of these networks. So, Alex, are there other reasons that you'd, you'd want to go here, use, use the Blockchain Explorer that are going to come up that people might have questions about that you can think of right this moment? Right off the top of my head, um, the most common reason that I've personally used one was, was within the uh, realm of operation of our NFT project, which was usually to verify that what somebody told me was true. Um, oh, like I bought this and got refunded or it never got sent to me or something like that? Yeah. So that, that was a common thing that you'd hear like during the mint, like, hey, I paid for this and I never received it. And all I had to do was open the blockchain explorer and go and check their wallet address, you know, and just be like, okay, cool. Um, sorry about that. Let me see the, uh, the public address, which is one of the safe pieces of information that you can share. It's basically like giving me your email address. Um, nothing really nefarious I can do with that except, you know, I guess tell other people, but yeah, I or spam go... you with, with tokens at 3 AM. I am your father coin. Exactly. Uh, so I could take that address to the relevant explorer and type it in and see like, oh yeah, look at that. You did in fact execute the transaction sending my mint contract in this case, uh, whatever the mint price was. And oh, look at that. You were not returned anything in exchange. So let me go ahead and fix that for you. Or on the other hand, like, no, I can see that this NFT was transferred to you. And if I look at the contents of the wallet, you just send me, I can see it sitting there right there on chain. So nice yeah. try. Yeah. Smart stuff. That's really it. It's a fact check. This is where you would go to fact check a claim that somebody makes. And the beauty of blockchain is that you can always fact check the claim somebody makes to you about what happened on chain. Absolutely. And I want to thank you guys for, for this. I know you're going to have some homework to do. I know you're going to have questions. So, so leave them in the comments if you've got questions. And I also want to invite you to check out the Rise Up Morning Show Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time on TikTok. I said Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, Thursday, people, we take Friday off. You can join through either of our profiles. It's right there in the banner, all correct. And if you don't have time to join a live show four days a week, I, I totally understand. It's nice to have your questions answered in person, but for people like you, we've also created the Rise Up newsletter. One time a week, you're going to get a super brief newsletter that gives you all the bullet points, tools, trips, uh, links to videos that we've done like this one so that if you miss the show or you just don't want to tune into the show, you can still get the goodness all free. All can be found at the rise up morning show.com. And of course, be sure to follow along here so that you can catch other tutorials like this one. I, I'm not sure what we're going to do next, but I know it'll be an adventure, right, Alex? Absolutely. It always is. It always is. What do you think? Uh, final thoughts, good jokes, words of wisdom, takeaways for our friends. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just, couple of the ways that you can then expand this and go on further, like I mentioned, are these other tabs down here. So, you know, pick a token, any token, one that you're interested in, one that you're curious about, one that you hear the influencers yammering on about and shilling to you relentlessly. Pick it, go check it out. Reminder again, you're going to need to search for it on the blockchain that it actually lives on. So if they're talking about a Solana token, for example, it's not going to be on Etherscan, it's going to be on SoulScan. 
Uh, if you're not sure, you can always just Google the blockchain explorer for the blockchain that you're curious about. There's probably going to be a couple options. Uh, you know, check it out, see if it's giving you the information. Like Evan said, the best thing you can do is be a part of a community where you can double check this stuff, make sure you're looking at the right stuff. But come down here, check the rest of it. You know, my my quick scan on these things is always then to go straight from, you know, are there currently transactions happening uh, to check out the holders. The reason I like to show the cold stack token is because they have this weird distribution in their holders. So I can see exactly how much of the supply is held by certain wallets. And I always like to use this as an example because 30% of the entire token supply worth you know, millions of dollars is sitting in this unlabeled wallet right here. And so one of the things I would do is follow this wallet to its own page and just try to get a little bit of information about what it is. And here I can see that, you know, the deployer wallet, so an, a wallet that has been identified as the cold stack deployer wallet, sent this thing, all of this cold stack, 1,042 days ago, happens to coincide with the launch of the token, and it hasn't moved since. But it's still a little bit worrisome to me that this one wallet is just sitting here with this massive amount of the supply, and if they chose to take this to the market and get rid of it, I mean, it would absolutely crater the price. We talked in a previous video about liquidity and what that would do. Mm -hmm. They definitely have it within their capacity here to just, you know, put way too much of this onto the marketplace all at once. And that could have huge ripple effects and cause a lot of volatility in the price. Odds are they don't want to do that because it would probably ruin their project. But it is really interesting that this is the way that this is set up. And what I mean by that is if you come over here, last thing I'll show you, you can see that this wallet here has been labeled as uh, the Uniswap version two cold stack to USDC. Notice this is the one that we were just looking at. The transaction right. we were looking at came out of this one and it's got a contract here. So this wallet is a contract controlled wallet, which you can actually go into and read the contract for yourself, which is then going to be the solidity code uh, that governs this thing. So, you know, you could take this code right here and send it to chat GPT and ask about it, or if you know someone who can read Solidity, or if you yourself can read Solidity, you can, you know, kind of audit this thing yourself. So it's interesting to me that this big wallet holding 30% of the supply does not have an associated contract. Uh, that would be a cause for concern. And one of the things that I would like to be aware of before I make the choice to purchase some of this. Yeah. Can you elaborate on why? Just because uh, of exactly what I said, it's, I, I want to be as sure as I can that I'm not going to invest in this thing and then have someone who owns a ton of it try to capitalize on the fact that this token is now worth a lot more than it was when they originally got that and try to cash out. And seeing that their wallet is not controlled by the contract leads you to believe, to conclude that this is a individual or entity that could choose to change its mind at any time, right? Yeah, that is, yeah. That is my impression. Um, yeah. One of the things that I think is a worthy disclaimer is that I'm not a developer. Evan's not a developer. I do know a number of them. So if I was researching this, I would probably take this piece of information and forward it to a developer, which is again, why I recommend being a part of a community with a bunch of different people. Uh, Cause I would like to ask, ask someone smarter than myself, you know, what am I looking at here? How much of a concern is this really? Am I right in saying that this is a concern? Uh, you know, because to me looking at this, you know, the Uniswap wallet is under contract. This MEXC one, interestingly, doesn't seem to be. Uh, is that is that is that correct? I mean, you know, how can we how can we check? How can we you know, what would my next step be? And uh, these are all just examples of the ways you can then take the info you get from the Explorer and use it to dig deeper. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I, I have no notes, man. I thought that was that was graceful and elegant. Uh, I have no questions except one more call to action to our friends to say, if you found this helpful, be sure to like subscribe for more content like this and let us know in the comments what kind of breakdowns you want to see next before signing up for the newsletter and joining us live and in person at the rise up morning show uh that's all i got for him alex what do you think i'm well met i'm well met too until next time my friends rise up <laughs>